2 Corinthians 12 this morning. I want to look at one verse, of course, uh, we'll use that as a springboard and jump back. And look at a few things this morning, but a uh, verse that jumped out to me is uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 10. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses for Christ's sake. But when I am weak, then I am strong. I know this is a familiar passage here to us this morning, but I want to take this thought, the pleasure of a Christian. Now let that, uh, think about that for a little bit, the pleasure of a Christian. Now, pleasure means happiness, delight, joy, satisfaction. Five times in the New Testament, this scripture is mentioned here about taking pleasure. Now, if I can get this tablet to work like my phone does. I'm going to look at these this morning the easy way, okay? So if we look at pleasure, we click on that, let's see if we can. There it is right there. Pleasure, five times mentioned there in, uh, in 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 12, that they all might be damned who believe not. The truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now we know that's talking about uh, those who have denied Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And this is after the uh, rapture has taken place. God's going to give them strong delusion. They're going to believe a lie and be damned because they chose not to believe the truth. So my thought on that always is if you reject the truth, you left believing the lie. So the truth is Jesus came and died for you. And the lie is that you can make it on your own. So that word pleasure there is mentioned. Now let's see if I can get back to the right one. And Hebrews 10, 6. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. So God had no satisfaction in that. And of course, verse 8, above when he said sacrifices and offerings, and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldest not, neither hadst pleasure therein which are offered by the law. And then the final one in that same chapter in verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul hath no pleasure in him. Well, that tells us right there of a few scriptures about pleasure. So I want to look at the pleasure of a Christian. Now, our flesh would rather think of pleasure as maybe, you know, something like a pleasure boat. You know, this boat's titled Pleasure Boat. I'd like to have a pleasure boat. That'd be all right. I just don't know that I'd have time to enjoy the pleasure of it. Amen. <laughs> it kind of sit in the yard like an ornament. I mean, that's why we ended up having to sell our camper years ago because it was an expensive yard ornament. You know, I just... Yeah. We didn't have time to fool with it, but uh, anyway, we think about a, a pleasure boat or a pleasure cruise. I know some of our folks been hitting on Facebook with that big old tail fin in the back They're on a cruise right now. That'd be <laughs> nice. But uh, we think about those kind of things. But we can have pleasure in infirmities for believers. It's all a mindset. Those times when our flesh is at its weakness, and that is, if our spiritual focus is correct, we can have pleasure in those times. Most of the time, you and I, uh, our minds need to get put in God's alignment. You know, when our cars and vehicles get out of a line, they'll start doing what? Start, you let go of the steering wheel, and them jumpers are going to start pulling to one side. you got to put that thing on a rack, and you got to get them lasers shot on it. you got to get the thing lined up. If it's not lined up and you, and you keep driving it like that, sooner or later your tires are going to start wearing on one side or the other. Um, and so that happens. Well, same thing with our minds. When we're going through things in this life, when it's a balancing act. It's a crazy balancing act that we have going on where we find ourselves now. I mean, we got, we're drawn from so many areas. Just like Mom said a while ago, it ain't like there wasn't nothing happening at faith yesterday. I mean, thank God we got things going on. 
But you can't be at all of them at all the time. So you just kind of got to play that balancing act. You know, everybody needs time. Everybody needs your time. Well, God needs your time also. That's where we fail the most. Yep. We can get so busy doing things that we don't take that time to build that relationship with our Lord. So we get out of alignment, and that's easy for us to do. And if we're out of alignment, and our mind's not focused on God, and, and putting Him first, I can't stress that enough, it's everything needs to revolve around Him. He died so He could have the preeminence, the first place in our life. The Scripture teaches us that. He wants to have first place. And if we will build our lives around Him and His will, it will be a fulfilled life. So the infirmities that we have in our life, we can have pleasure in them. Now, if we look back in verse number 1, uh, Paul said, it is not expedient for me doubtless to glory. Now, let's look at that. Ex expedient means it's not profitable for me. Doubtless means then to glory. He said, then he said, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Now, if we broke that verse down, it would simply be like this. It is not profitable for me now then to glory. I will Go from glory, and I will change from glory to the visions and the revelation that God has given me. Well, you may say, I'm not the Apostle Paul. God ain't give me no visions. Well, the Bible says, when well, there's no visions, the people perish. perish. If you don't have some kind of dream, if you want to call it that, or some kind of vision for the Lord, then you'll find yourself just drifting in this life. You'll find yourself not accomplishing what God wants you to accomplish. God has a vision for you. God has a purpose for you. When He is through with you and I, we'll be gone. Don't worry about that. Uh, I, I, you know, you hear it all the time, but when, when it's your time, it's your time, and it is. God teaches that. There's nothing untruthful or inerrant about that. It's a fact. So, here He said in verse 1, He said, I want to, uh, I'd rather turn my uh, boastings with my glory and the things that I've been through uh, to the visions of the Lord. Of course, if you went back and you read chapter 11 and starting around verse 23, all the things that Paul went through, bringing this passage of chapter 12 into context uh, of all the things he'd done, you'll see what he's talking about, glory, the things that he went through. He could boast about them, but he said, I'd rather... Uh, boast about the things that God has showed me. Now, in verse 2, he said, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. Now, uh, if you'll notice at the end of that, God knoweth, that's what a little smiley face we like to use sometimes, too. With a wink. With a wink, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what them things were when I first started teaching. <laughs> like, what is all this stuff? Of course, my daughter wears them out. You know, now they got the big smiley faces on them. But uh, there it is. God knoweth. And uh, so, Paul here, I think this was happened when he was uh, in Acts 14, 19, when he was stoned at Lystra. Matter of fact, they said that they, they stoned him and they drug him out of the city and left him for dead. That simply means when they drug him out of the city, I believe he was dead. They wouldn't know. I mean, he left him. He was, he was done, as we would say. Uh, Paul, and of course he mentioned it there in that big list in chapter 11 about the things that uh, happened to him. And you know the story there. And you can go back and read it for yourself. But I believe this is when it happened. Now, I can't help but think when Paul, before he was saved, you know, he consented at the death of Stephen. Mm -hmm. He saw him stoned to death. Matter of fact, what did Paul do? Or Saul at that time? He held the coats mm -hmm. of them that sat there and watched Stephen get stoned to death. Can you imagine those stones hitting Stephen, a man full of faith, the scripture says. <coughs> And a man that looked up to heaven and said, 
lay not this sin to their charge. And he saw Jesus stand up on the right hand of the Father. You talking about a glimpse? You talking about a revelation? And I, I believe when uh, someone is persecuted and and they are beating, I, I think, for the cause of Christ, they're going to have a special, not only a martyr's crown that the Scripture teaches about, but God will pour out some grace upon them. They may be able to withstand some persecution. We get, we're going to get it here in the United States. It's yep. coming. It's coming yeah. The more the Muslims take over, the more the uh, politically correct thing takes over, the more we shun God out, we allow the enemy to come in. And to them, we are a bunch of infidels, a bunch of non-believers. But you know what? And I'll be glad to be in the category of a non-believer for a Muslim any day of the week. Well, that stuff's coming. We're going to get more persecutions. They're not going to be too much stoning now. There'll be a lot of bombs and things. I don't know if y'all are aware of the bomb that just blew up uh, last week in Bangkok. Well, this boy was walking the streets of Bangkok a few months ago. Don't think that won't make you think a whole group of us was. And we was all together. Now, no doubt the devil wouldn't want to take us all out. But he didn't. And I pray for those who are... It would be interesting to see the connection to the United States as they pull out uh, these people that was blowed up. But anyway, things are happening. There's chaos all over the world. Persecution... Yeah, right. It's going to arise. It's going to get deeper. And so as, as Paul was sitting here consenting to the death of Stephen, you know what? He mentioned it time and time again. He never got away from that. I think that infected him as he looked at this man as Paul saw at that time being a non-believer, holding the coat, consenting to his death, saw him uh, look up. Can you imagine that eye contact? Now, I don't know... I tell you now, I can only visualize this as as in my Easter play. And, and I know Matt's just a man and he ain't God and all this yeah. stuff. I know the biblical correctness of that, so don't say that I don't and try to accuse me of he ain't God. Well, I know that. But I tell you, when he come up and he had that crown on and he, he was had all that blood on and he's laying there on the cross and we're driving the nails and, and, and things in his hand and just that... That looked up, and I remember one time me and him made eyeball contact. And I thought about man. You know, it's something about a time of affliction, and you make that kind of eyeball contact. You know what I'm talking about, brother. You see it every year. Well, you imagine Stephen <coughs> sitting here as those stones are hitting him. I wonder if he looked over at Saul, and they just made a, a, an eyeball contact. I bet he never got away from that if that happened. You think about the soldiers that nailed Jesus to the cross. The real ones that did it. When love looked over and forgiveness looked over. They made eyeball contact with the one that cre created him that is stoning him. That's a long-suffering God there. I couldn't do it. They'd have, to, they'd have to knock me on out. I'd have to be totally unconscious. For them to have their way with me because I'd fight with everything that was in me. <laughs> yeah. But I ain't God. But He is. And He did it. He laid down His life. What a God that we serve. Well, Paul never got away from it. I imagine when he was stoned in Lystra, he probably had a little flashback and thought, Lord, I'm going out like this. And he died. I, I mean, he was. they drug him out left him for dead. He was dead. And I believe this is the time that he was caught up in the third heaven. So with that in context, let's look at this. So I believe this is probably when that was. Now the Bible doesn't say I was. I died at Lystra. This is when I received the vision. But I think we can tie those two in that he did actually do that. But he did die and that's what he's talking about here. He said, I knew a man Christ 14 years ago. He said, Without the body in the body, I cannot tell. God knows such as one was caught up to the third heaven. Well, you know the, the heavens in the scripture. The first heaven being the clouds, the second the stars, the third were God <coughs> abodes. Now notice this word, little word called up here. 
He said, I was caught up to the third heaven. And then he get to verse 4, he said, how that he was caught up into paradise. Where was paradise before this time? It was down in the heart of the earth. So this is another proven fact that paradise was moved after the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So paradise was moved up. Now we call it the third heaven where God abides. What is 2 Corinthians, what is it, 5, 8? Absent from the body, present with the Lord. You could say absent from the body, present with the Lord in paradise. Up. So that's very significant. That's some of the little details you cannot miss in <coughs> context in the Word of God. So he said he was caught up into paradise. And then he said he heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Paul seen some things that God just wouldn't allow him to speak about. Now, I'm glad God allowed some folks to speak about some of the things they seen. I mean, we just talked about Stephen. He was stoned and he seen God and seen Jesus standing on the right hand of the Father. Well, that's encouraging. Uh, we know plenty of things that God has allowed people to see, but Paul, in several occasions, especially when he said, I has not seen, nor has he heard, neither had his end of the heart of man the things that God had pertained to them that love him, there's some things that we cannot utterly speak. Paul said, I cannot tell you what I see. I want to, as we're going to see here in a minute. He said, but I can't. And now you think, and you think about this. We was talking uh, this morning about, I, I just thought about Donald Jones riding down the road, you know, 98.1, about every week they used to, oh, uh, Brother Boyd would come on there and say, you know, this song goes out to Donald Jones, or y'all pray for Donald Jones, you know, and now Donald Jones is in glory with Fred Jones and with yeah. Bubba and with Dan and with others. I got to think about, man, what are they doing mm. right now? <laughs> they heal. <clears throat> they around the throne. They seeing some things. If they could come down, they'd tell us, look, oh, what y'all going through ain't nothing. Right. Y'all just keep on going. Keep on fighting the fight of faith. Well, he was caught up. There were some things he said, he said, and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for me to utter, for a man to utter. Now there's things that he's seen that God just said, look, I'm not giving you the liberty to be able to share this. And then he goes on. He says, of such one will I glory, yet of myself will I not glory, but in my infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, in other words, I'd love to be able to share with you. Now you talk about keeping a secret. <laughs> now you talk about caring something and being walking in obedience to Almighty God. Man, don't you know, especially your closest friends, mm -hmm. when they're struggling, wouldn't you want to just pull them up and say, man, let me tell you what God showed me. But he could. And the very same man that traveled all over the continent of Galatia, God told him not to open his mouth about Jesus Christ. That's pretty deep. That was his life. I imagine they was folks when he'd come across that continent that his heart was burdened for him. And he'd want to share the gospel with them. But God said, nope, keep your mouth shut. And that had to break his heart. And I'm sure as he's seen some of his brethren and sisters going through trials and going through things. And, and I'm sure they would come to him. Can you imagine? Well, matter of fact, if you go back in verse 11 and verse 28, he said, Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. That's why pastors, you know pastors don't live too long. They use a lot of them don't. A lot of them die of heart attacks and heart problems because they, it's a stressful occupation. And I hate to entitle it an occupation, but it is what it is. Yeah. It's an occupation. It's a calling. It, and, and all that. Well, Paul had all this care upon him. Paul had to be some physical fit man. Mm -hmm. I mean, man, he was beaten. The Bible says there, 
Five times I was beaten with 39 stripes. So five times four is what? 200 minus five would be 195 times. No wonder he would come and bear in his body the marks of the Lord Jesus. No wonder he would come sometimes and just take off his shirt and turn around and start preaching away from the crowd. His body, he bare those marks. Powerful man. He went through some shipwreck those 14 days. Shipwrecked three times, the scripture talks about. So many things he went through. He was a physical, fit man, yet he could control his tongue. Wow. That's something else. I'm telling you, and, and it would have been good to be able to share those things. But man, he just could not have the liberty from God to do it. So then he says, he said, verse 6, Though I will desire to go, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which seems to be, or that he heareth of me. He had a testimony going. Now, you think about that. You think about a man that has done all this persecution, in prison folk done all the things that he did. After he got saved, they didn't nobody want him around. I wouldn't have. If the man had come in my house and have made, basically consented to my children getting raped and beat and thrown in jail and done all this stuff, I wouldn't have no compassion on him. I'd want to kill him. And would love to get my hands on him. So I would be the one that would sit back and say, who do you think you are telling me anything about the love of God? He fought some persecution. He had it. Mm -hmm. And he brought it on himself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, he had some things there. So those kind of things that he went through, he said, man, I, he said, I, I want to boast. I want to tell you the things. He said in verse 7, unless I should be exalted above measure, unless you think I'm more important than God, about the revelation." There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan above me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice. Three times that it might depart from me. I don't know that he didn't. I don't know how long those three times of prayer was. I don't think it was just. Lord if he would just take his from me. I, I don't know. I, I think it was some deep prayer. Some deep times. But he got his answer. It's a great passage of scripture we all can take to heart when we're going through hard times. He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness, made complete. Most gladly, therefore, I will glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. Infirmities means feebleness of health lack of physical strength. you got to have a right alignment, folks, for us to be able to take pleasure in that. But I know this for a fact, when we get ourselves out of the way, when those things are going on in our life, and our focus, and we align with God and align with Him, God gives us the strength to get through those kind of things, and we can't have pleasure in those. These things were written for our learning. These things were written for our Hell, he said, I have pleasure in infirmities. Remember the pleasure of a Christian. He said also there, reproaches. That means mental or physical injury. In necessities, being needful. When lacking these things to meet a need. There's all kind of necessities. He said, I take pleasure in reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You and I can take pleasure that God allows us to go through these things. If you remember when they was beat, and that's what I, all these is a prelude to what's coming. We're gonna have to grow strength from ourselves one of these days. Yep. Now this may not we you know we may be taken out of the way before it gets like that, and some of us may be physically taken out of the way because God may call us on home. But we're going to see these times. We're going to need each other. We're a team. We're a team, and we need it. No man is an island. I like that song. 
<laughs> we can't stand on all. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these words this morning. Thank you, God, that we can have pleasure in infirmities. God, help us to be aligned to you, to be able to know these things and realize them and cast our care upon you, for you care for us. We thank you that you are sustaining God, and you meet our needs, and you're looking forward to us, Lord, relying on you even more. Lord, would you carry us in Jesus' name. Amen.